Welcome to Introduction to Accounting, Preparing for User's Perspective. Compute and understand the cash conversion cycle. What does the cash conversion cycle mean, also known as the net operating cycle? The cash conversion cycle attempts to show how long the company's cash is tied up in inventory and in accounts receivable. When a company's cash is not tied up in inventory or receivables, the company can use it for other purposes, such as paying dividends, buying back stock, expanding operations, paying off debt, and borrowing less. By using the freed up cash to pay off debt and reduce borrowings, the company's finance costs will decrease and its income will increase. In general, wise management constantly strives to reduce its cash conversion cycle and thereby free up cash and reduce financing costs. How do you compute the cash conversion cycle? The cash conversion cycle is computed by taking the company's operating cycle and deducting from it its days payables outstanding. The days payables outstanding figure represents the number of days between when a company purchases inventory and when it pays off the related accounts payable. Assuming you are computing it for a full year, days payables outstanding is computed as follows. Ending accounts payable divided by cost of goods sold, which is also known as the cost of sales or cost of revenues, times 365 days. When companies increase their days payables outstanding, their cash conversion cycle decreases and they are able to keep their cash longer and use it for other purposes. If you don't recall how to compute the operating cycle or its components, you can review the diagram below. And if it still doesn't come back to you, you might want to review the video titled Compute and Understand the Operating Cycle, slides 1 to 14, as provided in Canvas and in YouTube. Example. Two virtually identical companies, Company A and Company B, have day sales and inventory of 30 and day sales and receivables of 25. However, their days payables outstanding are 10 and 50 respectively. Compute both companies' cash conversion cycles. Company A, 45 days. Company B, 5 days. Based on the above, Company B's shorter cash conversion cycle provides it 40 more days worth of cash than Company A. Some companies are very good at minimizing their cash conversion cycles by having great inventory management, great credit granting and collecting, and great supplier relationships, which allow them to significantly delay their payments on accounts payable. Example, Amazon's cash conversion cycle for the year ended December 31, 2012, was a negative 41.04 days, computed as follows. Day sales and inventory, 43.76. Day sales and receivables, 20.94. Less, days payables outstanding, 105.74, resulting in a cash conversion cycle of negative 41.04. If you are interested in knowing how each of these variables were computed, here they are below. Day sales and inventory, day sales and receivables, days payables outstanding. Please stop the video and review these computations based on what you learned from the operating cycle video and from this topic regarding the days payables outstanding to ensure you understand where the numbers are coming from. What I want to do is point out a few very interesting things about Amazon's cash conversion cycle. Amazon's days payables outstanding of 105.74 indicates that on average Amazon makes its suppliers wait over a hundred days to get paid. Amazon clearly has very good credit terms with its suppliers. In fact, because Amazon's days payables outstanding is so long, its cash conversion cycle has become so short that it is actually a negative 41.04 days. Amazon's negative cash conversion cycle effectively means that Amazon does not have to borrow any money to purchase inventory because it receives customer payments in advance of when it has to pay its suppliers. Amazon effectively funds all of its inventory purchases on the backs of its suppliers who provide it interest-free credit for 105.74 days. In addition, due to Amazon's negative cash conversion cycle, it has an extra 41.04 days to use billions of dollars of interest-free cash for other things, cash that would have normally been tied up in inventory or in receivables. In the operating cycle video, we discussed how in general companies benefit by minimizing their operating cycle through the reduction of their day's sales and inventory and day sales and receivables. However, we also noted that an operating cycle that is too short can have unintended consequences such as lost sales and disgruntled customers. Similarly, companies should strive to reduce their cash conversion cycles. 
which might require increasing their days payables outstanding. However, companies need to avoid the unintended consequences of taking too long to pay off suppliers. For example, suppliers who do not get paid on time, as agreed, may simply choose to stop selling to the company, or choose to tighten up their credit policies, or worse yet, choose to require cash on delivery, COD, for all purchases. In short, as management strives to reduce its cash conversion cycle, it needs to ensure that the benefits of a shorter cycle outweigh the related costs. How do users use the cash conversion cycle to analyze a company's cash management? Many financial users watch for trends in a company's cash conversion cycle as they relate to other amounts and ratios such as the gross margin and gross margin percentage. What would you think about a company whose cash conversion cycle is declining and its gross margin and gross margin percentage is declining? This may be an indication the company has lost its market position and its pricing power and is having to heavily discount its products to get them sold, which may not be sustainable in the long term. However, if its cash conversion cycle declines and its gross margin and gross margin percentage both increase, this would normally be a sign that the market for the company's products is improving and that it is managing its inventory, credit, collections, and payables efficiently and effectively. Some companies study their potential customers' cash conversion cycles to determine what, if any, credit to grant to them and what their payment terms should be. For example, if Company B were to request credit from Company A, 30 days, same as cash, Company A would most likely request Company B's audited financial statements so it could evaluate Company B's credit worthiness. Company A might then choose to compute Company B's cash conversion cycle as well as its days payables outstanding. If Company B only has five days payables outstanding, Company A might be wise to require cash on delivery, COD, or require payment within only five days. A short or negative cash conversion cycle can reduce financing costs because less cash will be stuck in inventory and or receivables, expand more aggressively because it will have freed up more cash that it can use, reduce inventory carrying costs because it will be able to store less inventory, think of the just-in-time inventory systems, reduce the risk of customer non-payments because more customers will pay before their accounts become uncollectible. Please take a moment and study the following diagram, which should help summarize the cash conversion cycle for you. Up at the top is the computation of the cash conversion cycle, and down below is more of a visual representation of what the cash conversion cycle actually means. By now you should be able to define, compute, and interpret the operating cycle, the net operating cycle, also known as the cash conversion cycle, the days payables outstanding, and be able to solve for unknown variables in the cash conversion cycle. Good luck on the quiz.